Okay, ladies and gents, today we are doing section 11.3. This is Simplifying Irrational Roots, or AKA Simplifying Radicals, um, Radical Expressions. So, so far we have learned um, <clears throat> how to estimate radicals. We learned several different ways to estimate to the nearest tenth, to the nearest hundredth. And now, then we learned how to simplify uh, a radical with a variable in it. And now we're looking at simplifying the radicals with irrational roots, so non-perfect squares. This is by far the most used and also the most accurate method. All right. Homework tonight's page 493, 1 through 59 odd. All right. So. Okay. So if we have rad radical 4 times radical 9, there's a couple different things we can do. We can multiply them under the radical, and it still equals rad 36. Non-radical with non-radical. And the the square root of 36 is 6. Or we can take the result of the radical rad 4, which is 2, and the result of rad 9, which is 3, and I get the same answer. So it doesn't matter how you do it. There's more than one way to get there. So we can take 20. And what we're going to do when we have something that's not a perfect square is we're going to look for the perfect square. There is a perfect square in there. All perfect squares, we have to take those roots. So 20 is made up of the perfect square 4 and 5. We can take a root of 4, but we can't take a root of 5. So the root of 4 is 2, and so then it becomes 2 rad 5. Okay, and that's how we write it, 2 rad 5. You don't need to do this. I usually just do the second step and the third step. So, for instance, I might just break it up like this. You can break it up any way you want. You can put it up under the same radical, or you can just break it up like the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and so that makes 2 rad 5. Got it? Okay. And you can check that using a calculator. We can take our calculator and put in the square root of 5, or you can even estimate the square root of 5, which is less than, it's a little more than 2, but less than 3. So I'd say like 2.2, 2.3 times 2, and then actually utilize that. So if we have something like 18, there's multiple factors to it. We can pick 6 and 3, we can pick 2 and 9, but it's not going to help me to pick 6 and 3. Um, I, I could, well, let me just show you. So I'm going to want to go for the perfect squares. Since 9 is a perfect square, I'm going to pick that combination. And then I have 3, right? I would just go right down to 3, rad 2. Okay, this means, think of your radical just like a variable. It's three times radical two. Okay, but if I don't, I, there is another way that I could do this, and that is if I do do rad six, rad three. Now, I know my PowerPoint's going to say not to, but I really could have broken the six up into prime factors. And six is made up of two times three, and then I'm going to bring down that other 3, right? And every time you have 2 of the same number, we can pull 1 out as a perfect square, 3 rad 2. So there's a number of ways to get there. I always like to go for the most direct way, but if it's a big number, I'll just break it down into prime factors, and every 2 I take 1 out, okay? But generally, I wouldn't normally choose 6 and 3 because there is a perfect square. Now, to simplify the number, it must have a perfect square in it. So in 35, the only factors are 1, 35, 7, and 5. So we can't simplify that. There's nothing that can be simplified. So 35 is the most simplified factor. 
Um, we don't, I'm not going to keep going through this because I've asked you to memorize these through 25. Um, you will need them in this chapter. All right, so let's do one together. 50. 50 is made up of, I, I'm going to start with breaking it down by 2. 25 times 2, rad 2. And 25 is a 5, and 2 is not a perfect square. I want you to pause the recording and try 2 through 6. All right, let's check our work. 27 breaks down to 9 times 3. So that becomes 3 rad 3. 98 breaks down to, I always kind of start, if I see an even number, I divide by 2. So 2 times 49. 49 times 2. That usually tends to get kids. And so notice up here, I'm breaking them into individual parts. And here I'm just putting it all under the same radical. It doesn't matter how you do it. It's 7 rad 2. I'm just taking that perfect square out. I'm taking the perfect square out. I'm taking the perfect square out. 12 is made up of um, 4 and rad 3. So you should have gotten 2 rad 3. 45 is made up of rad 9 times rad 5. So you should have 3 rad 5. And 28 is 4 times rad 7. So that would be 2 times rad 7. And those are your solutions. Do you need to do all three steps? No, you can do one or the other. All right, 72. Here's a problem that we may encounter. Um, so 72, it's one of our multiplication facts. So most of the time we like to go, um, well, okay. I normally wouldn't have gone by 36 and 2. And if I simplify that, it's 6 times 2, 6 rad 2. Okay, normally I would have gone but with 8 and 9. And then we take the perfect root of 9, which is a 3 rad 8. And now you see they're different answers. But the answer has to simplify to the same thing. And the problem is, is that 8. It's made up of a 4 times 2. So if you leave a perfect square inside of the radical, and 8 is made up of that perfect square 4, then times 2, then actually you will you will not be able to it's, it's not simplified it's not completely done so I can keep going and break this down to 3 times rad 4 times rad 2 right and so then I get 3 times 2 times rad 2 which is 6 rad 2 we do end up in the same place so, questions there. All right, here we go. Let's try some more. Pause the recording and try the next few. All right, let's check our work. 32 is made up of 16 and 2. Now, I could have done, broken it up into 8 and 4. If I break it up into 8, that's made up of 2 times 4 times 4. There's... The, those two, I can take one out, and then I'm left with the rad two. Otherwise, we can just break it down to that perfect square, which was 16, and so that would be four rad two also. 200, 100 times two, break it down to 100 times two, and so that becomes 10 rad two. 80, um, well, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking to myself, 20 times 4. And if I do 20 times 4, that really means 20 is made up of 5 times 4, and then I've got this other 4. So we can pull out a 4, and I'm left with rad 5. You also may have just broken it down by 16 and 5, and then it's 4 rad 5. Same thing. Doesn't matter how you get there. 30, I have 6 and 5, I have 10 and 3, 2 and 15, there are no perfect squares, so it's already simplified. 
Okay, 48, I'm going to say 16 and 3. And the root of 16 is 4, so it's 4 rad 3. Next one, number 6, is negative 5, and I'm going to break. Now, notice it's, it's next to, and that means multiplication. So negative 5 times rad 60. We can do 12 and 5. I can do 20 and 3. I can do 4 and 15. I'm going to do 4 and 15. So basically what I'm going to have is negative 5 times rad 4 times rad 15. Negative 5, next 2 means multiplication, so rad 4 becomes rad, I mean, becomes 2, so negative 5 times 2 times rad 15, that makes negative 10 rad 15. Okay, and next... <clears throat> Um, so again, now we just have coefficients. We're always going to treat the coefficient like, almost like this is like the radical is the variable and the coefficient's like the coefficient. So I know there's a 9 and 54, so I'm doing 5 times rad 9 times rad 6. And so that becomes 5 times 3 times rad 6, which is 15 rad 6. Pause the recording and try the next few on your own. Now let's check our work. Um, so s negative 7, I'm going to break that down to six, 16 times 3. So that's negative 7 times 4 times rad 3, which is negative 28 rad 3. 42, we have a 6 and a 7, or we have a 2 and a 21. Does 4 go into it? No. I think that's, let's see, 12? No. I think that's already simplified. Yep. Okay, next one, negative 3, and I've got 4 times 10. So it's negative 3 times 2 times rad 10, so negative 6 rad 10. 180, I can do 9 and 20, or I can do 18 and 10. Now, we're going to have to break those down further. So this is what I mean by... Um, bigger numbers. I know there's at least a 9 in there. 9 times 20, right? And then within that 20, I've got 9 times 4 times 5, right? 20 is made up of 4 times 5. So the root of 9 is 3 times the root of 4 is 2, and what's left in the radical is 5, so that's a 6 rad 5, and it's not a negative. I just made that. So that's what I'm coming up with. Let's see what my PowerPoint did. They went to 36. I never would have thought about that. So, again, I never would have thought of 36, so it doesn't matter. Just break it down to smaller numbers. I broke it down to 9 and 20, and I found the perfect square in 20, which is a 4. Okay? Now, number 12 we have the square root of a negative, and we call that an imaginary number. So this is not a real root. Okay? All right, so now we are adding our variables, okay? So we're going to basically break this up, numbers and variables. So it's, um, you know, rad 18. Let's go rad 18 times rad x to the 10th, and 18 breaks up into, actually I'm going to just keep it broken up into the same radical, 9 times 2, and x to the 10th is a perfect square. The root of 9, the root of 9 is a 3, I can pull out a 3, I can pull out an x to the 10th, I can pull out an x to the 5th out of x to the 10th, now, that is an odd result all alone, so I would have to do this, and then I'm left with red 2 under the radical. Okay. Questions? Okay, moving on. Let's put that in PowerPoint form. Okay, here we go. So 24, I'm going to break that down. I know there's a 4 in it. So I'm doing 4 
times 6. And I have to break down now our x to the 11th. Remember what we did yesterday? We went to the closest perfect square underneath. Not just any even one. What's the closest perfect square under 11? Less than. So we would go to x to the 10th times radical x. I can pull a radical out here. I can pull a square root here, too. I can pull a square root here, x to the fifth. What stays under the radical is 6 and x. Now, do I put the absolute value around x to the fifth? No. And we don't put it around x to the fifth because it's not an odd result all alone. There's another one left here. So my final answer is 2x to the fifth radical 6x. Okay. I'm not sure why everything's whoa. Skipped completely. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's try one more together. We're going to break it down to 40 is made up of 4 times 10. And I'm going to go to the closest even, a to the 30th times radical a to the first. We can pull a root here, I get a 2. I can pull a root here, I get a to the 15th. Remember? Because a to the 15th times a to the 15th equals a to the 30th. It's almost like we're halving it. And what stays in under the radical is the 10 and the a. All right, pause the recording and try the next few on your own. All right, let's check our work. Okay, we can break 8 down to rad 4 times 2 and y to the 50th is a perfect square. So I can take a root out of 4, which is 2, and I can take a root out of y to the 50th, which is y to the 25th. And since that is an odd result, so I'm sure you guys are used to seeing me do it like this. I'm doing 4 times 2, and then I have a y to the 50th. But you can put the y to the 50th. So again, I'm taking the 2. I'm taking the y to the 25th. And then what stays under the radical is the other 2. Right? And because this is an odd result all alone, we put it in absolute value. Okay? All right. Pause. Uh, you guys are trying the next two on your own. Go. Now check your work. 32, I'm going to break it down to, let's go to x. I would probably break this down to 16 times 2. My x is going to be x to the second times x, and my y is already good. Okay, I can pull out a 16. I can pull out a 4. I can pull out an x out of the x squared. And I can pull out a y to the fifth. And what stays under the radical is the 2x. And my x is an odd result, so it goes under absolute value. And it's an odd, oh no, the x is not in the absolute value because there's another one left under the radical. But the y is an odd result all alone, so that goes on into the absolute value. Okay. I'm going to replace that with the PowerPoint. Okay, let's try the next one. 45 breaks down to radical 9 times 5. I'm going to go A to the closest one under 9 is 8, and B is going to stay at the 20th. So I can pull the radical 3. I can pull a to the 4th, and I can pull b to the 10th, 
and under the radical, I'm left with a 5. Nothing goes in absolute value because we are not left with any odd results all alone of variables. That rule is only for the variables. Okay? Okay, pause the recording. Oh, let's do one of these on our own. Now, when it says... When it says 12a squared b to the 7th and the directions, guys, that's the direction reading is a big problem. On that last test, I had a lot of people that were simplifying things when I asked for the restrictions and um, assume all variables are non-negative. In this case, when you get that little piece added to your directions, then you do not have to deal with the absolute value, okay? They're assuming that everything's positive. You don't have to use your absolute value. And in fact, in tonight's homework, they are assuming all variables are non-negative. Um, there is no absolute value being used. But... Um, yeah, okay? So assume all variables are non-negative. Once they give us that, for pro likely the rest of the chapter, they're going to start saying that. Um, okay, so when we have something that says assume all variables are non-negative, the only thing that we don't do is the absolute value. So I'm breaking this down to 4 times 3. I've got a to the second, and then we have a b to the sixth, rad b. So I pull out a 2. I pull out an A, and I pull out B to the third, and what stays under the radical, you might like to say, I use this, I use this, I use this, what stays under the radical is that 3B. All right, pause the recording. Try the rest on your own. Oh, let's check our work. So you should have had 5m cubed, n to the 4th, rad 2. The next one is 4x to the 4th, y to the 18th, times 2x, I'm oh, sorry, 2x squared, y to the 9th, rad 2xy. The next one should have been, I'm just going to read the answers, 5a squared, b to the 5th, rad 3a. All right. Now, assume all variables are non-negative. In this case, we're going to have to factor, okay, what multiplies to 16 and adds to negative 8. Let's go negative 4, negative 4. They, my hint to you is that they can only give you a perfect square trinomial. When we take the root of that, it becomes x minus 4. I don't need the absolute value because it says assume all variables are non-negative. Okay. Go. Try the next three. Or why don't we do the next one actually together? Now, when you look here, remember underneath the radical, we're going to have a GCF. Oh, then they have to leave you with Otherwise, there's nothing you can simplify. And then I'll be left with a times y squared minus 6y. I'm factoring a GCF. And then this would have to be plus 9. Then I'm going to factor this. It's 2. The root of y squared. You can do this. What multiplies to 9 and adds to negative 6, it should be negative 3, negative 3. So it's y minus 3 squared. And so what I'm pulling out is a y minus 3 and you do need it in the parentheses, times what's left is the 2, the GCF. Okay? Pause and try the next two on your own. Please make sure that you are putting that parentheses. If you don't, this means something different. It, if you don't put the parentheses, it means y times and then you're doing, you're only multiplying negative 3 times the radical. So it really needs to be that entire binomial is times what's left. All right, number 11, our 
This multiplies to t plus 9 squared, and we're going to take the, the we're going to make that binomial, oh, sorry, goes to t plus 9 squared, and so we end up with, all right, we're checking our work. I had to run for a call, and so we take the apps. Oh, we don't need the absolute value because we're on assume all variables are non-negative. Now, pause, try the next one on your own. Okay, let's check our work. We have a GCF, which is 3. And then I'm left with an m squared minus 2m plus 1. Okay, we have the rad 3, and then I'm going to factor that to what multiplies to 1 and adds to negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. So I have times m minus 1 squared. So I'm going to take out a perfect square here to m minus 1. I have left in the radical 3. I'm going to tell you right now this would be marked wrong. Why? Because we need that parenthesis. It's not just negative 1 times th rad 3. It's the whole binomial. So really, this is your simplified answer. Okay. Moving on. And that is our show. Bye.